I am unashamed. What about you? Yeah, we're in First Corinthians 16. But Jace, we got a lot of potential dangers today. So there's there's a storm outside. Oh man. So if you hear thunder in the background, so there's a pretty good chance the lights will go out. That's happened before. And then there's a wasp in here somewhere. I'll get that wasp. So we're just gonna keep cameras rolling because you know how it is on Unashamed. We don't stop for anything. I right? chased a rat uh, <laughs> every hour or so. I, Recently? I, 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 last night. I had it on all night. I, I kept trying know. to hem him up all I had. I didn't want to blow a hole in my floor <laughs> by shooting him with a large weapon. That's the way I was with those bats. Well, I was like, how do you shoot I got inside out of your own them, house? Uh, you know, like the kids we used to have. The BB gun? The BB gun. And I checked it on a cardboard box. And <laughs> pew, I said, well, it'll go through a double-layered uh, uh, wooden box. I said, so if I think I've made a headshot on him, I get him. So he's gnawing, and but it sounds like he's in the room with you, <laughs> but he's actually in the the wall between you, your room, and the next room. He's yeah. in there. Yeah. Well, you got to blow a hole through the wall to get him. So, <laughs> but you, you but didn't was, do that. I was within inches of where I knew I could just hear him sitting there gnawing. You need one of those heat. I mean, it's like heat. teeth on wood. <laughs> so, so Miss Kate comes in. She, she grabs me by the foot. She said, "He's in the bathroom tonight. He's in the bathroom." Uh, three or four nights earlier, he was in the bedroom. <laughs> then he was started with the midway. But the bottom line is, one of them did that, and then died. And there was a little where a pipe goes from your commode through the wall. It was little lip flies were coming out of there. Mm. And this even is, with me, it was, you know, this is getting disgusting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've been. I, I, this I, is I, what I, happens when you live way I out chased, in the woods. I chased that rat last night for about off and on until two, two, three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I you need one did. of those infrared. I'm armed heat. with a BB gun, and I thought, well, if I got a flashlight, I'll, I'll blind him, but I can get him to look. <laughs> but, but the rat, yeah. the rat won last night, so he's in the house, and he's a big one because I saw him, you know, about three nights ago. I saw the same rat, the same thing gnawing around on stuff, but uh, he won't come out in the open. But I got one shot at him at about a foot. And, but but the gun had to be lying down on the floor like that. And just before I shot, I saw what piece of paper moved. That he, I could see that paper moving a little bit. He was up under a couch in the, one of them little rooms in there. What, what, your dogs can't get him? Yeah, remember, I got a Miss, Miss K, your mother is a hoarder. <laughs> and and when you hear a, a rat, you say, well, I just go over and kill him. Uh -huh. You're going through a mountain <laughs> Of stuff that hoarders uh, keep, which is why the rats are in there because there's which a lot of stuff. Why the rats? I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, Phil, I lived circular. down there for years. I never remember a rat infestation. Not these big ones like, like you, that. You have no. now. You these are wolf rats. Yeah, they're, they're not. Like, they're not like mice. These are uh, from from tail to to nose. They're about like they're about a, about a foot foot and a half long. They're pretty good sized varmints. Oh. And I asked a lot I mean, of them about get, it. Some guy said, oh, yeah, I'll get you some antifreeze and put it in there. I thought, yeah, I got three dogs. <laughs> yeah. Antifreeze kills them instantly when they drink it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah I get a little out of my... <laughs> so the redneck... That's a redneck solution. Yeah. Kill everything. Then they got to stick them where they stick. Yeah. Now, I did catch about three or four of them on the stickums where they well, get You may stuck. need to get some more stickums. I got some big traps that didn't work, got poison, and I put it to where a dog couldn't get to it. But evidently the rats couldn't get to it either because I just hate to put paws and yeah, scattered yeah. around inside my house. No, I'm I just agree. not I'm just not that fired up about it yet. Yeah, I agree. I mean the paws is worse than the rat. Of course the problem is nobody maybe it's not a problem. Nobody wants to come stay with you anymore. Like Mia went out there where she was scared to death. She stayed up. She's been night. talking about that experience. <laughs> she's she's got her, said, watch them rats and she's like, Whoa. <laughs> She's she's got her mom's uh, uh, love well, for look, varmints. Al, I so don't think listen, I, mom, much on rat I don't either. I don't like warf rats right yeah, now. Well, our listeners across the, the, this this the land of the beautiful, the what is it? You, <laughs> the home States, of the brave, the, home of the brave, and all that. I said, well, <laughs> we fight these rats. I don't know how long the human race has been fighting rats. <laughs> I dare to say, I think it's been a been a battle 
for a long time. I'd say probably, man against rats. I'd say mice and probably rats. go back to Noah and the Ark at least. Well, you know, you go back to um, some of the worst plagues in Europe. Yeah, came with the rats. Yeah, they had it and then transferred it to human beings. The bubonic plague and the black lung and all these different things. Terrible. Yeah, I mean they're a, they're a kind of nasty little. They very much so varmint. And it's I don't that. like it at all. But I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean I've I've called in several professionals, but they can't. keep coming up with poison. Yeah, and then I'm like, I I don't know about that. Put cl- yeah. put poison so in your closets. Put pause in the You're alone. going the Matt Dillon route. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is you're not a trick shooter. I mean, I think the BB but, gun in the house. I mean, it's just kind of embarrassing to tell somebody <laughs> from 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 12 o'clock last night to about 3 o'clock, I'm, I'm sitting there, a grown man sitting there on the floor with a BB gun. Yeah. I mean, you know. It, it, oh, I thought, man. I wish I'd had a camera like, crew there for it's that. It's like your childhood. I've killed a lot of varmints, but I've never <laughs> got into the rat hunting business. Well, they say you reach an age where you go back to where you're pretty much like you're that's a kid. Right. You start so, over. You know, when, I was, at, when yeah. I was 10 years old, I was had a BB gun looking for rat, rats. I mean. That's right. So you've made a full circle. You're One back. good thing we got going is being a man of the forest, as they say. I've stayed in the woods a lot, so and I've seen a lot of things in the woods. It it doesn't surprise me that if you have a dwelling with a roof on it, that that the varmints will come. Yep. Yeah. In other words, uh, the one trap that your youngest boy, he's had a chicken killing problem. Oh so yeah. He hmm. comes out there, but now he has under his belt, he's caught. Opossums. Yep. He's caught. What was it? Scots, raccoons. Raccoons. raccoons and, and, and now bobcats. Bobcat. So the varmints are getting bigger. I mean, he, that, that bobcat. You know, he was. Oh, you you're know, seeing the food chain go I mean, right up the line. Sixty pounds. Sixty pound bobcat. You wonder where the chickens go. Yep. So that's up in Tennessee. So them Tennessee folks up in them hills. <laughs> that's up in the mountains. You know. Oh yeah. But yeah. I'm down here in the flat country. But it's rats, mice, skunks, possum. <laughs> But it is a new phenomenon because Jace is right. I don't remember any rat problems when we were growing up. Mm. Me either. Me either. Maybe, it'll, nice. maybe some field mice. I think they bore holes from up under your house, find ways of gnawing. I hear them gnawing all the time. And I see ch- wood chips here, there, and under, you know. Yep, yep. You know, under the sink, we, I caught about three under my sink in the kitchen. They had all kinds of, you know. Stuff the women, you know, whatever, clean the floors and all, you know. They had every about 15, 20 bottles were back over in the back. I just saw rat peels. I said, hmm. So I, I, I trapped that and I did pretty good on that run. I, I caught three or four of them. Well, you know, last oh, year when we had the snowpocalypse, they call it down here, we had that deep freeze, remember, for about a week. Yep. So they that's when the, all the field mice moved into my house, which yep. I could hear them scrambling around. I don't, you know, I was a, I was willing to live and let live till the cold went away, mm-hmm. until they started coming out and getting up on the counter and eating my avocados yeah. right in front of me. So some of the, then we declared some of war. the city dwellers say, "What have you been doing lately? To killing rats? <laughs> I mean, and it's a serious thing. I mean, isn't that know, a saying? Let's they're waking get, you up. Let's get about the rat killing. I think. They're gnawing. It's so loud it'll wake you up." Yeah, that's yeah, not. Rah, 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 rah. I don't know, Dad. I'd have. Yeah, you got to. It's a nine one one situation. If, yeah. Luckily, Mom's a little bit better. So I wanted to mention my T shirt, Jace, which was. Um, it's kind of an homage to the Ukrainians, especially those that are having to flee. We got a lot of brothers and sisters over there too. So the guys at three sixteen tees dot com they made this, and so all the money they make from this T shirt, they're going to donate to One Kingdom. Uh, for Ukraine relief, which is actually, we got guys that are going in and providing that. So I check way, those guys out. That's, yeah, Harris, everything's, everything's charity. The people who would say, speak out against men like us, when we're discussing uh, spiritual matters, uh, where the cosmos come from, you know, did salt water make us, or is there a God of heaven who made us? Karl Marx uh, dedicated a personal copy of his book, Das Kapital, to Charles Darwin, wrote him a letter as a fan, inscribing that he was a sincere admirer of the information he had come up with uh, regarding how how the animal kingdom, how did the trees, how it all got here. 
Darwin also influenced, this is an 1800s, 1820 or so, Margaret Sanger, the, the champion of ripping babies out of wombs. Oh, yeah. Friedrich Engels, I remember Engels, studied him in history, Vladimir Lenin, Adolf Hitler, all big fans of Karl Marx, all of them, uh, of Charles Darwin. They were all big fans of Charles Darwin, the father of, you know, what they call it? Yeah, the Theory father of revolution. revolution. Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, the one that slaughtered, just slaughtered human beings. Uh, Pol Pot over there, around Cambodia, just yep. slaughtered them by the millions. These mass killers, all as a group, are adherents, and they bow down to Charles Darwin. Yep. But just that makes you wonder. And now we're looking at Vladimir Putin. He's another one, just like him. Yep. Just a murderous, <clears throat> just lies and murder is what he's famous for, right. which are his father, according to Jesus, is the evil one. Yep. John 8. John 8. Murder from the beginning. Your father is, was a murderer from the beginning and a liar. Yeah, any, father of lies. Any of those that fought. And look, it, it makes perfect sense when you think about that because – if you were going to try to rule people with an iron fist and you were in charge and have to stay in charge, yep. you you couldn't really ever go to something where somebody else is over you. And by the way, you wrote in our notes, uh, a lot of people wonder where this information comes from. A lot of it comes from you, Al, uh, uh, about this one world order. Yeah. That's what they're after. That's They want the one world order. Where but you want to be in charge. A small <laughs> little group, you know. <laughs> exactly. A small little group gets all the money. Right. But their they're, they're, they're foot's on your neck. Yep. And that's where we're headed if we're not careful. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at the facts here. So yeah, every time these things rise, it always comes back to some bit of spiritual warfare. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's the rise and fall, you know? So, I mean, I, I don't know what you say other than we just have to be diligent. And one of the quotes for came from one of them, organized irreligion, organized irreligion. That's what communism is in the 20th century committed atrocities just in the last hundred years on a scale the fiercest religious wars in the past never even came close to approaching. There's been wars between, you know, you know, who was the, who was the bunch that went over the, the pilgrims, not the pilgrims, this big mass. We're going to get rid of the, the Middle Easterners, we're going to kill all them, you know. Crusaders, you're talking about? Crusaders. Yeah, you had the Crusaders, you know, and the, those wars and all. Right. But the ones that have been on this one world order thing, the communism, uh, nothing has come close to that. Of course, the you know. The slaughter of human beings. When you read the Old Testament. Just, we're watching it right just now. Just as, as, as a big picture, when you look at the Old Testament, it's a bloodbath. You know, there. Oh, yeah. We've been warring <laughs> since, <laughs> since we started. I mean. You know, just, I tried to look it up in the encyclopedia, <clears throat> and, I, and I did. I, I'm not privy to a, a cell phone or something, a computer, but I just looked at what the encyclopedias had to say about it, and it's amazing. And it, I don't even they they didn't count a half of them, but you talk about some wars just since I've been on the earth. Yeah, it's just lot. one after the other yeah, after the never, other. They're never going to stop. Just the slaughter of each other. Yep. It's in vogue. They well, just, it's it's satanic. That's what he does. Well, it's either said. it's either not valuing other human beings because they're different, or you want wealth or land or power. You say it all the time, Dad. If you love God and love your neighbor, if if that's the core of who you are, you're not being a big, they're saying, a big war person. You know what they're saying? <laughs> they're saying, ah, what what idiots? Just un unschooled. Yep. They're just dumb. Well, if you want a you want a verse that's that's a bumper sticker verse, which we're going to get to sixteen, which doesn't seem. I mean, it seems like a wrap up. Yeah, it's a wrap up, but I I like it because the fact that this is the details of this are too uh, in detail. Just to think that somebody just crafted this up or made this up right. i mean when you look it, at, it, it personalizes the hang on just yeah. let's take a break so i think it's safe to say that uh no subject is taboo on the unashamed podcast is that safe to say hey. we talk about anything the world pretty much just 
They'll talk about anything. So that's why I'm comfortable for talking about one of our sponsors, Tommy John Underwear. Even mm. our underwear, we don't mind talking about on the Unashamed podcast. <clears throat> and I've told you guys this before. I was a Tommy John fanatic uh, long before they started sponsoring our podcast. Now they do, which I have now created two disciples of Tommy John because both you guys wear them. They're, they're fantastic. Over 17 million pairs have been sold. So a lot of other people love them as well. So I love mine and, and you'll love it too. If you, I love mine and you'll love it too. If you give these guys a try shipping and returns are free because every pair is backed by Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or it's free, but you won't be sending them back. Trust me. You get 20% off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash Phil. TommyJohn.com slash Phil. 20% off. TommyJohn.com slash Phil. See their site for details. But I like this. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start signing this 1 Corinthians 16, 14. I mean, it's a bumper sticker. It says, do everything in love. That's good. Yep. It's just. That's a good memory verse. Yep. Yep. They, they were asking me on all these interviews when I came out with this recent book, uh, Uncanceled, is what happened when Jesus died on the cross. The cancellation process, you sin, you die. He came down, kept the law, then died to get us out from under it, put us under grace, and you, you'll be raised from the dead. On all your sins are removed, and you'll be raised from the dead, which we're looking at right now. And someone say, we're the Dumbos. But if this is true, there's going to be weeping and wailing when they look up one day and this whole thing ends. And they're like, oh, my goodness. You don't want to miss them, it. Them dumb rednecks were on to something. We just <laughs> we just miss it. That's funny. I tell you well, what, I th- I'd I... rather be where we are, Al, than yeah. where they are. Oh, yeah. Well, I think people get a misinterpretation when, like, when 51 of 15 – says i tell you a mystery it's not like a mystery that you know when you look at the greek word and it's meaning that, that, that. you don't have an answer to well that you can't figure out it, it's yeah. kind of like the that passage where he said in first corinthians 2 when it said none of the rulers of the age understood it you know, God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time be- began. And none of yep. the rulers of this age understood it. But when you read this, you know, from cover to cover, he has revealed it. You yep. can know. I mean, you think yep. about the first John that says. He's told us what I, the mystery is. Well, <laughs> write this so that you may know that you have eternal life. And he's yep. saying it as if this is the mystery of all time. In other words, as long as there's been mankind and death has ruled, the, the mystery is how do we escape? You know, how do we how do we get off the planet alive? But can you imagine how many books have been written about the next life? And there's been TV shows and documentaries. And, yeah. Uh, I used to I used to watch that one. They there was a show that was called. Is it I survived or uh, I think it was I survived and and they would show like where people were abducted, and they made it like from just criminal. Yep. Mischief, but then they had another show in that light that was said I survived beyond the grave. Now yeah. those were. <laughs> I have. I have no idea what they they were. If someone, you know, they they felt like they died or their heart stopped beating, and then that process of being resuscitated, they had this experience. Most of the times, it was the light, it was the right. tunnel I saw, but it was pretty pretty interesting. And so I think sometimes they'll say they that, were floating above themselves. Yeah, they look at it as <laughs> mysterious, but I'm like, no matter what, he's revealed this mystery in that there is a way. To come back from the dead, yeah, it's not something like you're hoping. You're we we the Jesus is his body cannot be found, nor could it be. Yeah. He wasn't there. He come back from the dead. He wasn't asleep. wasn't needed needed resuscitation time, three days. Yeah. Right. He was dead. Yeah, and the time frame. It's interesting. Surely you've heard Ephesians chapter three verse two uh, about the administration of God's grace that was given to me. 
for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I've already written briefly. In reading this, then, you'll be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations. Before Jesus showed up, everybody, every man for himself, and I mean, you had a law that was a killer, you know, I mean, keep these or die. And, and men operated under that code for thousands of years. It was not made known to men in other generations as it has, as it has now been revealed, Jesus showing up, to, uh, by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel. I mentioned that to, uh, who's that cat? He's a brain. Uh, uh, the little Jewish guy. Mark Levin. Not, not Mark Levin. Oh, Shapiro. Shapiro. And Shapiro and I talked. I, I made him, I had him understand. I said, Shapiro, we. we He's Jewish. Yeah, I said, yeah. we, I'm a, I'm a lowly Gentile. I was grafted in yep. to your tree, the Jewish tree. Right. And he was, he said, he paused a little bit and he said, I appreciate that. I was letting him know it's through the Jews our salvation came. Right. The Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. We're looking at it with the Corinthian letter on how it came about. I became a servant of this gospel. The gospel's the center of it, 1 Corinthians 15, which we've been looking at, by the gift of God's grace given to me through the working of his power. Although I'm less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And it's certainly not going to be found in Charles Darwin, that's for sure. It was a mystery to him big time and his adherents. That didn't, that, that's me talking right there instead of Ephesians. <laughs> to make plain that's to the little everyone. That's addendum, by the way. To make plain, and Jace was right, to everyone, the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden, he's already said that, who created all things. His intent was, and here we sit, was that now through the church, that's us, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers. He's talking about the evil rulers, authorities in the heavenly realms. He's talking about Satan and in his cohort according to his eternal purpose, which was behind the whole thing to save the human race, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of all my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Boy, what a text. So that's well, that what was, we're looking at as it unfolds when you point. get to car rent. Right. That's my point, Phil. He, <clears throat> he, he spends this whole time writing this letter. They had all these problems from yep. morality to, <laughs> for you know, their assemblies looking more like a something that was not godly. And then the long and, and then the in the overarching view, three times he mentions God's not the God of disorder. That's what's going on here, right. Corey. Yeah, but he reminds but, but, but them of the gospel. He's the author of peace. Right. He peace, reminds peace. them of the gospel. He has the chapter on love. And then he goes all the way through this about the resurrection. And he gets to the end, 58 of 15, and he's like, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Yep. Which, by the way, that stand firm is the same thing he said at the start of 15. Remember on this gospel in which you've taken your stand? So yeah. he, he repeats that. Well, so if you stand on the gospel now and you, this resurrection is not some kind of mythical thing that you can't embrace. You have the Holy Spirit of God. Right. And it's so, no longer it, a it, mystery it, how to get off planet Earth alive. It, the mystery has been revealed. That's I mean, it. You, know, you remember right. when Peter said that? He's like, you know, People long to look in these things, but it's been revealed by the sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ Yep. and uh, through the Holy Spirit. Then he's like, even angels long to look in these things. I mean, everybody was wondering 
how God was going to pull this off. Well, he did through Jesus coming to earth and specifically his death, his life, death, burial, and resurrection and continued life. Yep. So that's what he's saying. But then, So then he's like, so go to work. And this is where I think modern day this is not translated because when you think about like because the next chapter he starts talking about giving we have this thing to where we give to the church for somebody else to work so the people in charge of the church can work we're hiring them this is not what this says hang on just let's take a break so we discover new things all the time from our sponsors. And one of the things we discovered from our friends at Omega XL is that you have 360 joints from your neck all the way down to your feet. I never knew that until we started uh, taking this product, which is interesting. I'm a, a joint a day, I guess. You're right. I must say, I, I take about three a day. Me too. But uh, I have no wakes. No, me either. I wake up feeling great in the morning. Uh, Omega XL, what it does is it helps your body uh, produce SPMs, they call them, which naturally happens when you're young, and that that makes your joints uh, rejuvenate and your muscles move like they were when you were young. So it's a great supplement. We love it. Dad and I have been taking it for a while, uh, and it works. So you can order some Omega XL, uh, get a second bottle for free. So buy one, get one free. When you go to OmegaXL.com slash Phil, that's OmegaXL.com slash Phil, or you can call them 800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. This is like, y'all need to come together. Let Jesus be your Lord. He, he's, he's your, cause he said it once, well, almost a hundred times in this, in this letter. And get away from bad company. You're, you're, yeah. You're a son of God. You have the Holy spirit. And so then when he gets to second Corinthians, all of a sudden it's like an army. It, it's, it's like a bunch of warriors representing God. Cause you, you know what we're going to get to in second Corinthians five, as though God were making his appeal through us. Yeah. Yep. So you're going to go work, which I get so frustrated. He's going to bring up, we're now ambassadors. Exactly. I get so frustrated when I hear these sermons about people having sermons about trying to figure out what the plan of God is in your life. I'm like, the plan is clear. <laughs> he, Jesus, he sent Jesus. He died. He was buried. He was raised. You have surrendered to that. You have the same spirit that raised him from the dead. So now you go be like Jesus on in this planet. That hey, is the work. I, say, I get that, Jay. Somebody will say, <clears throat> these people will come up from these different... But don't put it in the school systems. I'm like, wait a minute. You take it out of the school systems and your school system will collapse. Well, so, exactly. so Jay, they'll say, so what is your five-year plan for the church? So, well, lead people to Jesus and disciple them. Yeah, but, but specifically, what are their goals and what's going to be your yearly... You know, how are we going to measure your success? I was like, lead people to Jesus and disciple them. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much if you if you get that one down, you're doing the work that God you know called exactly. you to get do. that one down, and the mystery is over. And you're talking, <laughs> well, and, you're, and you're right. In, in Ephesians, he said the reason you have supported people is to equip others to do the work of the kingdom. Yep. I mean, the idea is you're an equipper. You're not the worker. You're the equipper. Well, that's why in first They tie that and say, well, you can't work for, for a little lower because that means you'd be under work, so not grace. You said, no, I'm well, doing the sure work because of grace. He sure spent a lot of, of time about work, talking about work here. <laughs> he and look, he didn't just stop there. Uh, in 16, he even says it some more. Where's that? Where about? are you? About, I'm in. First Corinthians 16. Well, 1558. He, he says about that work, and then he brings it back up in uh, 16 and 16. He says, to submit to such as these and to everyone who joins in the work. And labors. And, and labors at it. Well, what is all this work and labor? What? <laughs> I thought it, we were on the grace. <laughs> I thought we were because supposed to relax. Grace, well, you are on the grace. That's why you're working. Oh, okay. Yeah, because of grace. We work. I mean, you remember the first Timothy uh, five seven. Where I mean, he just dropped that out there when he said, "He who who does it work and provide for his family, he's worse than an unbeliever." Yeah. So don't ever, don't you know? Grace is what saves us. 
But even in Ephesians 2, do you remember what it, what it says? I mean, which is one of the most famous passages in the Bible. It's like you've been saved by grace. This is not from yourselves. This is after he, he talked about you were once disobedient and you were under the control of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Yeah. But God in his love and mercy raised us up. Here's the resurrection and seated us with him in the heavenly realm through the plan of Jesus. It's by grace you've been saved, not by works so no one could boast. But then what does he say? For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. That's why exactly. Sunday morning. That's why, that's why we're here. That's why, we're here. why Sunday morning, because uh, a lot of our listeners say, well, I wonder what they do because they just run their mouth for a few hours. and We see it on the Internet. But then they they go on about their business, shit about the duck killing. What they don't understand is, like Sunday morning, I looked up and I'm, there was eight different states being represented. People from those states came down here to Louisiana. They were there, and 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 all this is just rehashed. I mean, the gospel symbols are right on the front of the little podium. Right behind me, I have them on a screen. He, there's God became flesh, and I'll show them that, and then he died on a cross. I'm going through it, and someone says, well, the people that are already there, why would you keep repeating that? Because why don't we get down to the deeper things of the truth? I said, that's as deep as you need to dig. <laughs> it's Jesus, him crucified and raised from the dead. I said, the reason I'm going through it every Sunday morning when I see people visiting, they're from away from other places. This may be the only time they'll ever be able to hear it. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But the podcast, this podcast brings them. But well, then Phil, we talk further. And But my point is, look, like so when I did this event this past weekend, there's two 20-year-old somethings that I shared. Well, they were they were doing exactly what this is. They were giving themselves fully to the work of the Lord. Yep. Now, they, they get paid. One of them sells insurance and the other sells wood products. They just decided we need, because of what God has done for us and the resurrection that is ensuing, we're going to work. Because it's hard to pull off an event where there's 1,200 people there, especially when you feed them. Yep. I mean... You talking about workouts? Oh, workouts! Can you imagine, and to pull it off that it's done professionally, and so I'm saying here that to me that's an example of what they're they're not working to be saved. They're working because they are saved in Jesus, and that's our purpose for being here. Same thing as Ephesians two. Right. But somewhere you say, well, what, there's nothing we can do. It shouldn't be based on our performance, and he's going to get to that in in Second Corinthians. Where, where he says that exact thing, uh, this is in verse 9. In, I'm skipping ahead to 2 Corinthians Chapter one. 1, 9. Yeah, 1, 9, because it says, Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death because people were you know, threatening them. And, and eventually, guess what would happen to most of them? They all died because of their faith in Jesus. But this happened. Now listen to this. He wasn't griping that people were trying to kill him. He wasn't blaming God. It, he says, but this happened, persecution, that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. There you go. So he's out there saying, I'm working. There's no doubt he's working. And I'm being threatened to quit working for the Lord. But I realize that God raises people from the dead. He did the same thing in chapter 15 here. He By get, the way. He, he gets all stirred up about the resurrection, and he's like, give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Who's he talking about? Just rank and file members. Right. Sure. By the hang, way. Hang on, Dad. He you, has, hang on, Dad, before you right. read. Let's take a break. He has <laughs> delivered us, after he said he's raised the dead, from such a deadly peril, dying without Jesus, he, that's a, he said that's a deadly peril. There, that's it, and he and he will deliver us. On him we've set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. So, so being delivered from physical death 
and living forever, immortality is riding on all this to our listeners. You say, what's at stake here there, uh, redneck? I say, well, <laughs> the stake is uh, immortality. Yep. That, that's, where, that's what we're talking about here. Well, and it is it is an amazing arc, which we'll take the jump when we get into Second Corinthians, that if I had two words to describe these two books, the first one would be disunity, would be my description of First Corinthians, even though obviously there's some stuff in there. But there's a lot of it among the churches. A lot of it. And then the Second Corinthians, though, it's it's all about ministry. I mean, Jace is right. Oh, it it goes from like this disjointed, disunited group of people to <coughs> we're going to take the world for Jesus. I mean, it's it's an incredible. But it, look. it's look, and it's male and female. Nobody's thinking about when it says if anyone is in Christ. When he gets to that chapter four and five of Second Corinthians. He's like, he's a new creation. We don't look at people from a worldly point of view anymore. Right. And then he launches into this as though God, who's reconciling the world to himself, he's using us. Yeah. And so you're not thinking, oh, is he, was he just talking about the church leaders and the pastors? Or No, he's talking about everybody. Everybody. That everybody represents Jesus. Just like what I keep going back to that event. We had planners. They had volunteers. They had cooks. Yep. They had a speaker, me. But, I mean, we all worked together hard. I had the easiest job. I just got up there and talked. Yep. And then I, they were like, do you want to stay after and linger? I was like, no. I mean, because somebody work, else comes in. <laughs> they we were work like, with, okay. Not much of a linger. We linger-ed. work with the homeless. You say, well, why would you fool with them? They're human beings. God loves them. And Jesus died for them. We work with, with people who are homeless. You say, what do they do? They work with the homeless. Yeah. We teach them to share with their homeless brothers mm-hmm. what God has done through Jesus. So you have the homeless working with the homeless. But everybody's together. All these different people. Some are wealthy, some are not. You say, but all the way down to on the street, there and during that, you say, "Well, uh, have y'all got any grub coming?" Because you know, if you're homeless, you know you're walking down the road in the street. You don't know, you know, where, where you're gonna get your next meal. Well, if you can, you can make out every week. You 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 got us sitting there, and the grub is the grub is flowing. We're providing food. We don't care where you came from. Homeless? Do you have a house? We're not worried about that. But you make a good point. You have to people who have been delivered from something, tend to have a heart to want to go help deliver other people. That's it. So that's what you had on the last podcast, Jace talked about speaking at our local Celebrate Recovery. I mean, mostly people who have come through some sort of addiction are the ones who are going to go back and say, we want to help you come out. When I go to these, at least and I speak at a ton of pregnancy center fundraisers and pro-life events, almost every one of the staff of these organizations, which are amazing around the country, 3,000 pregnancy centers, they're trying to do battle with Planned Parenthood, you know, to give women an alternative. You don't have to kill your baby. I mean, there are people that adopt it. We help, let us help you walk through it. But these women are almost all, I mean, these groups are almost all led by women who had had an abortion and then God had healed them from their, from what happened. And they're like, I don't want anybody to feel like I felt. Yep. So they're almost all run by people who have had that deliverance yep. and they're like, I want to help you. So that's really, that's a big key to this whole thing about ministry. It's about once I've been delivered, I want to help deliver other people. Well, it's like Colossians 3.23 when it says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. It's working for the Lord, not for men. It's a famous, famous verse. But my point is, then he says, since you think you will receive an inheritance from heaven, from the Lord, it doesn't say that. Since you know <laughs> you will receive an inheritance from the Lord, which we're going back to that. It doesn't say since mission. you hope you get an inheritance. Yeah, since you hope you'll <laughs> receive an it. No, you know you, you've been saved. You're in. You're going to live forever, and so then you should ask yourself a question, well, what now? And that, that, that's just what is crazy to me when, when you're in these churches and they're like, we've got to try to figure out what the plan is. Yeah. Like, the plan is pretty, pretty evident, but they don't like the fact because you're like, well, everybody is not supposed to or, or everybody doesn't have the talent of sharing Jesus. 
And I think when they come up with that, they're missing the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. We're sharing Jesus. That is the plan. And you, you don't, have to, be, out you don't have to be a scholar or a theologian. You don't have to be a, or or even a public speaker or whatever. But there, I mean, I just think that there are opportunities. I mean, I, I was at the grocery store yesterday, and there's, it's the type of grocery store where they have the young the young bucks that carry your groceries out or whatever. And, mm-hmm. and uh, which well, I did by uh, the way when I was a teenager. That's I funny. noticed this young buck who uh, just got a look about him. You know, he he had because one day I was coming out of the grocery store and I saw him he had his his truck was all one of these uh, they call them tricky trucks. <laughs> they uh, it like <laughs> bounces up and down. It's pretty incredible that someone designed that you can drive yeah. down the road. I saw a bunch and, of and, and the, uh, they used to have a commercial the, with the Latinos. <laughs> that's right. They, out in L.A. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, so this, <laughs> I have uh, a feeling that won't. That's not good for the suspension ultimately of your car, right? Well, they I mean, no, I think they got it designed. And uh, Jay's but, hopping up and down. Not, vehicles weren't designed. They for make that. them like that. Though. I know, but, but this, I'm this, saying this, that thing's gonna so be in the, the shop. What's the man's fancy well, rig so what jumping? Ju- is, what's his jumping pickup? Well, because he <laughs> had music playing so loud, and there was a lot of four letter words in it as he just drove by. You know, and I thought, <laughs> huh. but I noticed that he worked in there. Ah. And so I thought, huh, that's interesting. Well, I he was my guy yesterday. And I thought, huh. I said, every time I come around here, I see you. Because I've seen him in there before. And he said, well, I'm making that money. I'm working. <laughs> and I was like, well, what are you going to do with it? And he said, well, I'm fixing to go down to some beach somewhere in Florida. I was like, what are you going down there for? And he's like, spring break. Oh, boy. So I said, well, in a here, jumping truck. here it is, just because here, because I thought to myself, <laughs> now I've, I've started this conversation, yep. and because I'm saved, and because I'm going to live forever, and because I'm a new creation, and now this has come up, because I know what's fixed to go on down there. <laughs> Yeah. I said, I'm I'm going there. You know I said, what, I said you better. Be, there'll said, be more jumping than the truck when he gets yeah, down there. I said, you better take your Bible with you. And he went, <laughs> I mean, it was an an audible, huh? Like what? <laughs> the last Bible. Thing. <laughs> I said, hey, "Hang on, Jason. Let's take a break." <laughs> and he he was just looking at me, dumbfounded. I said, "There's gonna be a lot of cutting up down there." I said, "Now, when I was your age, I said I had been introduced to the Lord Jesus." the one who was resurrected from the ground. He was dead, and then he come back out of the ground. What was the look on his face when you... He was just looking scared then. <laughs> so Because now we're walking to my truck. And I said, you've heard that, hadn't you? And he went, not real sure. I said, oh, yeah, you're sure, if you've heard it or not. Either you have or you haven't. I was thinking, what, are you not sure that you've ever heard this? I mean, yeah, you you know if you've heard that. So I said, you're wondering what my point is. My point is, you're working so hard, and you're fixed to go blow all your money <laughs> on something that's probably going to start a process that's going to take you to the grave or to a prison cell <laughs> a lot quicker than you ought. <laughs> Good now he's looking. This guy got a lot more than he bargained He's a for. teenager. <laughs> and I said, but here's the here's the good news. I said, there is an alternative way to, to live life. I said, the reason I surrendered to Jesus is because I believe my favorite thing to do is duck hunt. I said, now yours may be to drive trucks that jump up and down while you're <laughs> driving in them. I said, I saw you come by. I said, but he when this you is said the, o- no, there's no granny. no granny. He was scared to death. <laughs> but I said, this is the only way that I know of that you can live forever. I was like, and so I was a young buck when I, I followed Jesus. You can do it. I said, but, you know, just to go down there and waste all your money and waste your time and, and probably get in trouble with the law and just, I was like, Act like you, an idiot. you don't need to do that. He's nothing. <laughs> Crickets. But I thought, you know what? I planted the seed. I mean, he probably will go down there. And I didn't have to do it. But my point is. Did you give it, him a good tip, too? No. You didn't tell him? Give him nothing. I know where that money's going. <laughs> well, as soon as you I gave him as, something better as, as soon as you finish your as soon as you he finish went back your, your some crazy man to yeah, yeah, after ah. hearing your little sermonette there, 
I instantaneously I heard thunder roll from the heavens. I'm like, <laughs> like that was yeah, amen. Jesus is on to something. That's God well. giving us amen. I told you. I, well, I mean, I got off into that story because I mean that happened yesterday. I didn't like designate. Oh, it's time for church work now. Yeah. There's a young kid. You just had an opportunity. Well, I'm not. He's driving by playing just filthy music where everybody can hear. He's making a statement. He's yeah. the one that went public with that. Yeah. I didn't mind the truck, but but just I'm like I'm trying to go to the grocery store here. But that was weeks before, <laughs> and now he knows who I am. And oh, so yeah. I was like, "What are you fix to do? You telling me you're gonna go to spring break?" <laughs> I just deem that as a, as he he's wanting a little spiritual. Not, not you know, not a war. Yeah, just a little, a little was jabby you, fight. He was letting you know where he's. Hey, still. I'm going down there, and I'm like, we're going to well, tie one okay, on. That's just dumb. I didn't say that, but I was like, that's a bad move. Take your Bible with you, <laughs> and here's why. I, I thought it was a good thing to no, do. No, but you planted a seed. I can guarantee you, that kid's going to think about it at some point during that. Probably, unfortunately, when he's you know in trouble is when he. Yeah, I, look, do I think that that stopped him from going? No, he's going down there. But I do think if he does wind up in a sticky situation yeah. one day, maybe he'll think, you, you remember, know, there is a way out of this. Yeah, I remember yeah. an old guy out there in the parking lot told me about these days. <laughs> but I'm locked up, but I should have listened to him. <laughs> that's right. Well, you know that's where... Yep, there it went. There we go. There it went. Okay, yeah. I Are mean, we still rolling? <laughs> Are we, Are we still I, rolling? I, I, I said I said it was coming. I, I, I gave you fair warning. That's like, either shut up or keep talking. <laughs> one felt, or the other. I felt like the now that I got my ears cleaned out, I felt like the lightning <laughs> entered this ear and came out the other side. I don't know if y'all felt that sensation. Was, I heard it. Yeah, I felt a sparkle in between my ears. So I wanted to read this. Look, First John four. You never know what you're going to get on Unashamed. I'll tell you that right now. Well, the the name of this podcast should be Thunder and Lightning, <laughs> literally. <laughs> well, you can't believe in the resurrection and talk about the resurrection and be sitting over in a corner wondering if you're fixed to get struck by lightning. I figure if this is the way to go, all right. Yeah, because we told the story before, Jay. I actually got struck by lightning one time. You were there. Yeah, you, you did. But, Al, you were not... Uh, leading a life. Yeah, I was in a bad picture. way then. I'm, I'm glad the Lord's You come me. that close to missing I, out on I, this I thing. was close. So 1 John 4 says, in in reference to do everything in love, which he, he says, right. and this what we're going to get to in 2 Corinthians about this give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. When he says in verse 16, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. Because, look, this young buck that I talked to yesterday, deep down, I mean, I wasn't going to get all syrupy and flowery, but if I didn't love the guy, I just said, hey, go go waste your life. You know, good luck. Yeah, have fun. You know, have have some. But I know what's going on down there, and it's not it's nothing good that's going to be beneficial. For yeah, but I think your instinct before. was on target because – he was telling you as a young man, here's where I'm at, and you're telling him as an older man, you're not in a good place. No. That's I mean, mono the only mono. thing he told me is where he was going. Why would he tell me that? Yeah. I'm not going to sit by and let you tell me where you're going without <laughs> responding in a spiritual way. Let's go to work. I thought, yep, there's my job right now. Yep. So I want to read this. In this way, love is made complete on us, to go back to where this all started, that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. Well, the day of judgment is post-resurrection. And you can be confident. Why? Because in this world, we're like him. So that, that's everywhere I go. And I, I know a lot of religious people disagree with this. That's why I'm saying I disagree with you disagreeing. <laughs> because I think in this world, once you understand who Jesus is, you surrender. The process of you understanding who Jesus is and responding therefore qualifies you to go out and share Jesus in some way. That is now your job, your work. That's why that Philemon 6 says, I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of everything we have in Christ. Most people look at that backwards. Get a full understanding, then go share. 
Yeah. That's why people say, well, I don't, I don't know the verses. I don't know enough. I don't know. I mean, I would share, but I don't know. There was no verses that that were quoted or shared in this discussion in the parking lot at the grocery store yesterday. Right. It was more, here's the facts. Here's a way to live forever. There's there's something more noble you can do with your life. I did it at your age. And, I, and look, I did tell him, I said, I spent some lonely nights. I said, and everybody... You know, thought I was a weirdo and a goody-goody and a Jesus freak for a while. I did share that with him. Yep. I said, but you know who the, all those guys called later on in life, even from their prison cell, when life didn't go as planned? The same old freaky dude. I said, so I'm just letting <laughs> one, you know. One too many beaches. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I saw on the news the other night, I mean, there's people... They've, they've, in Miami, they've declared a state of emergency. And I thought, oh, what is this? I just happened to see the banner. Oh, it's just spring breakers. There's shoot, there was shootings and mayhem. So I, I'd already had that seed planted in my mind. Are we taking a break? Yeah, I am. No, I think we're out of time, huh? Al literally just said, you know what? <laughs> I'm out of here. So... All right, we'll see Most y'all. Most people don't bring it up uh, during a podcast, but it's time to take a leak. But you might as well know when it's time to take a leak, it's time to take a leak. And we got an eight it happens. Going. So we'll see you in overtime. I'm hoping Al is back. Depends on the degree of this nature calling. See you in a bit. <laughs> I've never. <laughs> that was an emergency exit. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.